Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is the masters that we're running in uh, sport and exercise psychology here at UL. So within the past, that's a physical education, sports science department, we have a suite of master's courses and among them are uh, two actual courses within sport and exercise psychology. So one, um, which I explain in a moment is related for those who come in with a psychology degree and the other is for people who have um, degrees um, in related subject areas like sports science. So just to explain the scheduling of our course, um, this is a unique offering. Um, we begin actually in January and run till the end of December each year. Um, this allows people that graduate in summer or autumn, gives them a little bit of time to think about what they'd like to do in health with their career choices. And that's the feedback we've had from students. Um, this also means it's very much open to international students who want to come for a full year, and this also fits with their visa requirements. So the way it works is we have two days per week for semester one for spring semester. Um, this is designed to be flexible and allow people that are working full time or uh, have other uh, commitments to be able to do our course as full time students. Um, after a 12 week semester, we then go into summer modules and summer modules we have um, a lot of applied modules run during the summer and these are run on an intensive learning basis. So over a two week block, much of the learning takes place um, with a follow up uh, date for assessment. And um, we've had our external examiners and many guest lecturers attend our summer school, which is part of this intensive um, uh, learning block and it's been really well received. Um, we have a blended component. Uh, we've always tried to build this into the program, but this was one of our adaptations during COVID-19. So we offered more uh, online support using different platforms, have uh, some discussion forums and a lot of different ways for students to interact. Um, at the end of the program, you've got the final semester, the autumn semester, which is focused on the dissertation. The dissertation is a 5,000 word um, scientific article format, or else it can be up to 10,000 in normal thesis format. What's really interesting about that, we've learned from previous students experiences. So we don't just start the dissertation in autumn, you actually meet with your supervisor in the spring semester, get it through ethics before summer, and then you really hit the ground running by autumn. So this, you know, enhances the, the feasibility of the studies, gives you a better timeline and more, allows you to follow something that's really of interest and matches your passion. Um, just to explain the program structure. So we have two programs. One is the Masters in Mental Skills and Mental Health and Sport and Performance. And this is the program which is designed uh, to recruit students who come from a sport, science or related discipline. And the Masters in Sport, Exercise and Performance Psychology is the accredited pathway, which is currently undergoing review by the Psychological Society of Ireland. And that's for those who come in with a psychology degree or what's called graduate basis for registration. For example, they could have done a higher diploma to uh, achieve uh, this uh, level of recognition by the governing body, PSI. Ultimately, students follow the same pathway. So spring semester, we do a suite of modules, some of which are research focused and supportive like um, qualitative methods or advanced empirical psychology. And then you've got core modules like performance psychology, motor cognition, which is related to skill learning. And then we also have exercise psychology and mental health and modules from other um, uh, faculties across campus. For example, we've got wellbeing and work and that's from KBS Business School. And it's really important that people understand the organizational context in which athletes, performers, coaches all operate. And there is a really good understanding um, developed during that module. In the summer module, um, we have a research dissertation development module which prepares people for um, their thesis. It does this by focusing on statistical methods and the research proposal. At the same time, we have the intensive components of the summer school which typically comprises the uh, professional competencies and ethics modules. And this is a really interesting time and I'll reflect back on this because it's where we have a lot of international speakers uh, join the contributors to the course. 
this gives you know added diversity, international perspectives, and additional expertise beyond what we have within our past department, which, as you'll see, is already quite extensive. We have psychological skills training and applied positive psychology. These are core modules, um, which are really important for the practice of applied psychology. So we have a really interesting perspective in PES. You know, we combine sport, exercise, and performance. For example, um, within the exercise context, we have Exercise in Medicine, a Silver Campus Award. We have a huge uh, amount of research going on on the role of physical activity uh, for not just physical benefits, but for psychological well-being, conducted by Dr. Matt Herring. This is a very strong research area and uh, it overlaps with some of the other areas of work. For example, um, there is a Lero-sponsored um, lab for esports, so electronic sports. So there's a performance dimension here, which is, goes beyond traditional uh, field games we might be used to. And that's uh, a research stream which is run by Dr. Mark Campbell. So we have expertise that developed in applied sports, in elite sport, and esport. And um, we have large scale funding in esports, in social psychological profiling of elite athletes, uh, and nature based interventions, for example. So the psychological profiling of elite athletes is an Erasmus Plus project with European partners. And what that does is we're looking at what are the distinctive strengths that young athletes have that allow them to thrive in both their sport and their studies. This is typically we call a dual career role for athletes. And it's really, really interesting. Most sport bodies now recommend their athletes not to go professional or full-time, but actually maintain study um, because this can help with their coping, help them uh, you know, develop complementary skills between sport and their study. Um, we also have Horizon funding for a project which is looking at urban health. So looking at the psychology of well-being in urban settings, and this includes a four-year project based in uh, Limerick. So between myself, Dr. Tyg McIntyre, Mark, Dr. Mark Campbell, and Dr. Matt Herring, we have a wealth of expertise. Both Mark Campbell and I are also uh, practitioner psychologists. So we work as sports psychologists. Both of us have, for example, worked uh, within uh, elite sport. Uh, with For Mark, it would have included uh, golf and rugby, and for myself, it would have included a two-year stint with Monster Rugby. Um, we currently are engaged in research on COVID-19. Um, it's the most dramatic thing uh, one can imagine in terms of sport, which, you know, the postponement of Tokyo 2020 to 2021, the cancellation of many um, national and international sporting events, restrictions on athletes training. So there's you no know, hurdlers having to jump up and down onto chairs to train for the, their Olympic event. Um, we have many sport facilities closed and this hasn't yet normalized. So there's a real challenge here. And we were interested in see how athletes face those challenges. So one of the ways they can face it is, uh, you know, by being resilient, by supporting one another, by engaging in um, awareness campaigns around good practice uh, during for, for health during um, COVID-19. And this is by and large the response we've seen. Now, there are athletes who are at risk, and we've seen this from some of our early survey data. The survey is being conducted with different organizations, uh, Olympic athletes, professional athletes across different team sports, um, and uh, some overseas athletes. And we're really interested to know that the resilient response is actually quite common. But those that are under threat, for example, an athlete that may be career terminating, won't have a contract next year, or who's suffering from injury during times of COVID-19, that's particularly challenging because they don't have the, their support network and quite isolated. Uh, we also ran what's called a social um, social media intervention with the national partners, and this was with um, Mental Health Ireland and Sport Ireland. It was called Nature Moves, uh, and on Twitter, uh, it had, you know, I think 11,000 uh, posts uh, over one month. So this is a highly successful and interesting way that we wanted to contribute to people's mental health by raising awareness um, of nature as a pathway to our own well-being. We also developed uh, guidelines to help athletes through COVID-19 challenges. Uh, these were endorsed by the British Psychological Society and uh, they've been widely used. And when we come to our surveys, we often 
ask athletes what resources that they use and some of them are already replying they use some of the resources that we developed as part of a, a team with other partners um our unique summer school is uh certainly worth a mention we're aware that traditional um you know module format of 12 weeks uh, which we iteratively you know uh, sow the seeds cultivate and uh, get let you harvest the learning that's really uh, effective but i think part of a master's program is we have to offer something different so i myself have been part of summer school and winter schools in other institutions um, I was at a winter school in Germany where you'd ski in the morning and uh, learn in the afternoon and we can't offer that. What we can offer is a unique product. That product is our summer school which is held off-site mainly at Claritford Park in County Clare. So it's, it's in a natural green setting, it's beside um, the Shannon on the lakes of, on the lake shore of Loch Derg. It's a stunning setting and it allows us to have a more creative uh, format. For example, we do walk and talk sessions with the different international speakers. Um, we have uh, different types of forms and we use uh, case studies for problem solving. You know, students, you know, before lunch each day would be given a case study and after lunch they'd have to come back and present on their assessment of that case study. So there's a real world nature to this. Um, this intensive program is undoubtedly, according to the students' experience, a highlight of our massive program. Just to give an idea, this is from our last one. The themes were around mental health recovery, resilience and referral. So mental health, what's the role of that within sport? How do we promote good mental health? Um, how do we help athletes manage their own mental health and ensure that the other sporting stakeholders like coaches and management are aware of that and can be supportive? Resilience is a research topic of a number of my PhDs. Um, it's, you know, how do we develop uh, the individual and collective response to adapt um, positively to uh, major stressors. And referral is the, the, the probably the darker side here. It's when we're faced with uh, difficult issues with stu students and athletes who have real challenges uh, beyond our training. How do we develop a referral pathway to ensure they get appropriate support from clinical psychology, from a multidisciplinary team, or from counselling. And it's really important we have an awareness of the, around these three different strands, because we're often dealing with athletes that are thriving, dealing with athletes that are um, coming back or bouncing back from different stressors, and we're dealing with athletes that need uh, um, intensive support. So among the speakers here, we have Professor Jürgen Beckman, who's actually an adjunct professor, so he's a visiting professor at PESS. Um, we have Claude Butler, who's just finished her PhD on resilience, Mustafa Sarkar, who's a world-renowned leader on resilience research, and Paul McCarthy is actually a graduate of our program. Um, Paul Villeman is head of um, sports psychology services for the Dutch Olympic team, um, and they bring about 500 athletes to each Olympic Games, and he has a lot of insights to share in that. We, Jesse Barr, who's a PhD student of mine and IRC scholar, works in Sport Ireland Institute. Chris Bryan, a recently finished uh, PhD candidate, uh, who's a former Olympic squad um, open water swim athlete. Kira Lossi from Waterford was a contributor to, and Dr. Alan Raymond, who's an expert in uh, skill acquisition and coaching. So these are amongst the different experts that we're able to access during the summer school program, which you know offers a wealth of opportunity for mentorship, for learning, uh, and for fun. Just to give you an example here of um, from Wen Yang, who's uh, studying it for a PhD at the moment in Hong Kong. Um, Wen really enjoyed the summer school. It was a unique experience. She hadn't been so immersed in, in the Irish countryside until uh, she was on this program. You can see here, it was a highlight for her. The class was so energetic and she really got a lot out of it in terms of vitality and the personal experience. And uh, I think it's a, it's a nice rejoinder there. She says, I really don't want to say goodbye to my teachers and classmates because I had such a good time studying in the past building. Um, and obviously the weather was with us that day too. Um, this is Carl Sheridan. He's um, a medal skills uh, coach for uh, Munster Rugby Academy. Uh, and works with numbered uh, senior squad players as well. So Cahill had been a graduate of UL in psychology. Uh, he'd been a professional rugby player um, for many years at Munster. Uh, and the timing of him coming on the Masters 
he said actually helped him adapt into his new role so he's now you know undergoing further training to become a fully accredited uh, practitioner psychologist um he's obviously has you know mindful of the experience and standard of the lectures and you know this is just part of his career trajectory and that's the way many of the students see um, our program it's as the first step along a pathway to become the practitioner sports psychologist you want to be so there are future opportunities just as demonstrated by the experience of Wen Yang and Michael Sheridan. So Wen's gone on to a PhD and that's, you know, quite a familiar read for a lot of our graduates. They do further study. Uh, Carl's done further training since our masters, um, including supervision, including uh, internships in the United States, for example. Um, so there's the Sport Ireland Institute and we supervise many of our graduates to attain their accreditation. So that accreditation is uh, Sport Ireland Institute Professional Accreditation in Psychology. It's also offered in other disciplines. Um, and that's really, you know, at the moment, it's the gold standard we have in terms of accreditation to be a practitioner. You can become a member of a psychological society, uh, but that's more simply about your underlying qualifications rather than your ability to practice. So to become a practitioner requires um, submission of a case study, mentorship, uh, and referees and that case study is reviewed by the Sport Ireland Institute and this helps you know people formulate their own approach and philosophy to consulting. Um, Doctor research study as I mentioned with Wen Yang and we have other graduates that have followed that uh, pathway that's quite an interesting way because some people they find the, the research experience really invaluable. Working in high performance sport is where many of our graduates have gone whether it's in county teams within Munster Rugby even under number of graduates there. Some are still retained in their coaching role and have used it to upskill and others have gone into uh, sports ecology uh, practice. Um, one recent graduate has gone into uh, teaching so they're actually lecturing within past pursuing academic career. So there are a number of different tracks that you can pursue and I think my advice would be is you know to try map out some of these as you do in advance of doing our program see what your interests lie. But by the end of our program, you should have a fair idea which kind of track you're going to pursue, whether that's a track towards academia, whether it's a track towards uh, practice, or whether it's going to be uh, applied research. Um, that's all for now, but please feel free to email me to contact me at any stage. Um, my number is on the uh, website for our department as well. So look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.